this might be a new species from a thousand feet down at Spittle in the Sagasu Sea. I am so psyched. <laughs> Welcome back. How was it? Fantastic. 300 meters. 300? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the deepest yet. We saw at least six greeny yellow moray eels and a nice shark as well. Bigger than the others we've seen, yeah. And I'm hoping, really hoping, that uh, Patrick picked up a lovely bright yellow sea fan for us. No idea what they were, they could be undescribed. I'm hoping it's still in the basket when he gets back. So that is really exciting. Alex has just come up, grinning from ear to ear, saying that they might have spotted something down at 300 metres, 1,000 feet, that they have never seen before, that's undescribed, as he puts it, potentially a new species. So we've now got to wait for nomads to come up on the surface and have a look at what they managed to pick up with that, that claw and put in the box. Because not only is it difficult to actually pick up a specimen and a sample, Putting it in the box and bringing that all the way to the surface is tricky too, so fingers well and truly crossed that we've got something. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. Fantastic. There it is. Look at it. Right in the front of the box. So that's a deep water coral from 300 metres down. Right, what we need to do now is preserve that animal as fast as possible so that it's good for taxonomy. In other words, a specialist in that particular type of animal can look at it and decide what it is or whether it's a new species. So... And you don't recognise that one yourself? No. So it could be a new species? Could be, yeah. I need to go and get a bucket to shove it in. Sure. Is your bucket big enough? Uh, not really. But with a little creative stuffing, we can get the whole animal in. There we go. What do you think, Melissa? Beautiful. It's a big really specimen. Big yeah. Okay, folks, we've got whiskies into the lab. Yep. So are they like starfish then, these, these brittle stars? They're the same phylum, Echinodermata, but they're in uh, a different group within that phylum. So these are what we call off uroids, brittle stars, or sometimes if they're big like these guys, snake stars, because they're snaky arms. And what is in that um, container right now, Alex, that you don't recognise, that you think could be new? I don't recognise any of these. So, um, you know, we, uh, we have to send them to specialists and get them properly identified. That's really exciting. Yeah. It's a magnificent specimen, absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's in really good condition. It's just everything you'd want from a specimen. You know. <laughs> How exciting is this, Ollie? Well, whenever I see a happy scientist, I'm very happy. We're undertaking the scientific mission. So um, these are some of the, well, I think they are the best samples that we've pulled up so far. Absolutely, had yeah. a few challenges with those manipulator arms, but you know, the pilots uh, and, the, and the manipulator arm controller have done a fantastic job there bringing this up in such condition. two different species of Ophiuris on He's like a kid in a candy shop. He is so excited right now, is Alex. <laughs> New species? So well, species guy, he doesn't know about. Yeah. So this could be it. The Nectar mission may have just discovered some new species yeah. at a thousand foot. Yeah, it's going to be called the, uh, the footeritis, I think. Oh, the, uh, after me. Oh, thank yeah. you, sir. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. What I need are my five mil tubes first. We'll get some DNA samples. So talk me through the process, Alex. What, what do you have to do? Okay. So what we have to do is get the specimen and photograph it with its label. Two different species. I think there's at least three. Actually, there is three. If we don't know where this sample came from, then it's sort of useless to us. So we need to know the depth and the site and even lat long. And so to do that, we have these labels and it will follow the sample, sort of like a social security number. It'll follow the sample through its whole life. And then I will take samples for DNA analysis. What are you putting in there with the tube? 100% ethanol. 
how does that preserve it for DNA? It just uh, stops the DNA from degrading, so we, that we can then sequence the DNA. DNA has become very important just in terms of identifying these types of animals. Sometimes you worry about contamination with DNA, but because we tend to get so much from the animal we're sampling, we don't really have to worry about that. Right, I'm going to go outside and shove some of this in formally. Do you mean scientifically place this delicately into? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so what's formalin, Alex? Um, it's basically a solution of formaldehyde. It's very nasty, that's why I'm doing it outside. And it congeals the proteins of the animal. You can then look at the microscopic structure. When would we be able to categorically say the Necton mission discovered a new species at a thousand feet? Oh, we'll have to wait a few weeks and, until we find out whether or not these are new species or something that's been found before. Wow, what a sample. First up, we had that big octocoral, which was stunning and is apparently unrecognised. Then we saw that on top of that, there were three different species of brittle star, which we also reckon are unrecognised at the moment. It's exactly what we came here to do. The Nectar mission is conducting the XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey, and we may have just discovered a new species or a couple of new species from its depths. Now we've just got to wait and see. Make sure you guys uh, follow us on all these different social media channels. It's the best way to keep up to date and see all of our latest films. I'll see you soon. Whoa, it is rocky today.